Hello, my name is Melissa Marginette and I am Genomi Canada's newest artisan. I'm going to be working with the Genomi Memory Craft 9450. I am known for walking foot quilting and have two books on the subject. Walking Foot Quilting Designs came out in 2016 and my newest book, Edge to Edge Walking Foot Quilting Designs, is set to be released this week. So I'd like to show you how I set up my machine for walking foot quilting. The first thing I do is put my single needle plate in, along with the AccuFeed Flex Foot, Twin Foot, and I use the open toe attachment so I have lots of view right here. I like to use stitch number three because it locks the stitch at the beginning and at the end of each line of stitching. But 2.4 is not long, a long enough stitch for what I like to use. So I want to set this stitch up so that each time I come to the machine and I pick this stitch that is going to be the setting I want, which is three millimeters. In order to do that, I need to go into set, choose ordinary sewing, and scroll until I find favorite stitch. Favorite stitch adjustment, and I'm gonna turn that on. While I'm here, I'm also gonna turn on the thread cut after auto lock. And I'm gonna scroll back one, and I like to use the pivoting feature so I want the height to be as high as it can go, which is six millimeters. The reason being is that because I'm using this for quilting and often my batting may be of a higher loft. So I wanna make sure I have lots of room underneath the foot. Once I have those three things set, I hit okay. And it brings me back to the main menu. So now my stitch length is still at 240 or 2.4. Use the up arrow, come into stitch length. I'm gonna change it to three. And I'm gonna choose favorite stitch. And save. So you'll notice that turned yellow to show me that it's my favorite stitch. When I use the down arrow, it's still showing as yellow here. So I'm ready to stitch with that stitch. The one more thing, one last thing I wanna do is turn on the pivoting. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a little demo. I always wear my quilting gloves so that my hands don't get tired. And I'm gonna show you how I go about quilting a quilt. So I don't do any marking. I'm just going to use the intersections of the patchwork for, for my markings. So when I start out, I know that this block is going to be up to about here because the rest is going to be covered with binding. Now I want that auto lock to be under where the binding will be so that it's hidden, but I don't wanna to be too far off so that it, I cut it off when I trim my quilt. So I'm gonna line it up right there. Let that stitch lock stitch up to that point and I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to adjust my quilt so that I have a nice straight line to that intersection. I'm going to stop right at that intersection. Then I just adjust my quilt. My foot has lifted nice and high to give me lots of room to do that. I'm going to aim to the next intersection.
And each time my foot lifts, I'm going to adjust the quilt to make sure I don't have any drag. That's sitting nice and flat, kind of using my hands as a hoop, but I'm not pulling on it because I'm stitching on the bias. I don't want it to go out of shape. Stop again on that next intersection. Okay, and just continue working my way across. If I come across a pin, I'm going to remove that. at the end. drag happening so I'm just going to stop and adjust. Okay so now I'm coming to the end and again I know this block is going to end here because the binding is going to cover up so I'm going to aim for about there. And I'm going to take a couple more stitches into where the binding will be. Press the reverse button, press down on my foot pedal, and let it tie off and cut the thread. Okay, then I just pull the quilt all the way back, find my next line of stitching, and I stitch again. And I'll just continue to do this until the entire quilt is quilted. I hope this has been helpful for you.